First, can I ask our can I ask our note taker to please rename yourself to ask questions here? Oh, there we are, Antoinette. All right. Um, a, a note on the format of this session um, so that we have a chance to hear everyone speak and an adjustment. Uh, so we have a chance to hear from everyone and an adjustment from our prior meeting. Um, we're gonna try to keep things chat only to start. So if you could, if you have questions or comments, please try to, please chat them directly, take a direct message to Antoinette, whose name in this breakout session is Antoinette slash ask a question. Um, Antoinette will be our, um, the receiver of all of the comments that we, and questions we get through the chat. And I will attempt to moderate um, as we go. And Olivia will, 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 I'm sure uh, answer all of the questions um, that, that we have about um, the bus service. So a few rules before we get started, um, please. So I don't get overwhelmed and, our, and Olivia and Antoinette don't get overwhelmed. Share only one question or comment at a time, please. Um, use the chat button that's down below here um, with the little bubble and Type your question into the chat and send it directly to the to Antoinette, to the person named Ask a Question. Um, and I will note, if you have joined us um, not from a computer or a smartphone and you are joining by phone, you can raise your hand uh, by pressing star nine. Um, I will say to all, all attendees in this room, we expect you to use appropriate language and be respectful of each other and respectful of the hosts. Um, we're here to talk about buses um, and, and nothing more. Uh, with that, um, Antoinette, I am looking at our, uh, our chat folks here as, as keep, the, keep the questions coming in and I will attempt to um, sort them through um, and pose them to Olivia, who is our service planning expert tonight. Thank you, Justin. Anything else before we get started? I'm gonna do a quick overview of um, the changes for this area, but I'm not gonna take up the entire session because uh, I know we have a lot of questions um, from this group. Great, okay. Um, well, thank you so much everyone for joining. My name's Olivia Mobade. I am um, a project manager for the MBTA's bus transformation team. Um, I am going to do a quick overview of the routes that we're gonna be speaking about today. Um, they are listed right here. Um, I'm also already dropped a few links in the chat. The first link is to a recording of this session, um, this breakout room from our meeting on the second. Um, it has uh, a lot of detail about some of these routes. So I'm gonna go a little quicker today, but if you wanna comb through that video, go ahead by all means. Um, we also, I linked the interactive map so you can kind of drive along or take a look at things at your leisure. Um, that is also found on our website. And um, I've also linked the comment form. Um, that it, is excuse me, but is this the Somerville Cambridge breakout? Yes, it is. Um, and I've also linked the um, comment form um, that is on our website. So if you don't have a specific question, but you would like to leave a comment, you're welcome to do that on the form. With that, um, we already kind of went over the types of changes that we're making on our system. They're linked here on the screen. I'm not gonna read each one out to folks, um, but I'm happy to go into more detail with each one as we uh, finish the end of the brief presentation about each of these routes. Okay. Um, oh, quick note. These routes listed here did not change since the, um, since the May proposal. Um, so I'm not going to specifically touch on them during this overview, but if we have questions about them, I'm happy to answer them after the quick overview. Okay. 
the first uh, route change I wanted to uh, talk about is a pretty uh, interesting one. Uh, we had proposed a rather long T39 route in May um, that traveled from Jamaica Plain to Logwood Medical to BU to Cambridge to Somerville to layover at Porter Square. We heard from a lot of folks that this seemed very long and they were worried about reliability. We also heard from our operators that they were worried about the length and restroom access. So we have gone ahead and um, altered the um, proposed connections um, within this area. So um, the um, map on the left here is the T39 in our updated map um, headed to um, Copley as it does now. The T47 would connect East Somerville, Union Square to Central Square, Cambridgeport, BU, Longwood and Ruggles as a high frequency route. And then the T96, which we had previously terminating in Porter Square has been extended to East Somerville, Union Square area um, to provide uh, two Green Line co connections down there, as well as a high frequency connection between Union Square and Davis, which is something we heard from folks is a very desirable connection to have. Um, I'll also note for the T96 that we did alter the routing in Medford um, based on comments regarding hills and um, distance that folks would have to walk. Um, so that routing was altered, um, as you can see, um, up in the Medford Hillside area. Um, Route 55 um, was uh, proposed as a combination of essentially the CT2 and the 55. Um, we heard from residents in West Fens, especially seniors, that they really valued that connection to Copley Square that they have now. So what we've done is uh, keep the 55 to Copley and create essentially a, a Route 85, uh, which has many components that the CT2 does today, um, connecting Kendall and Longwood, um, but it would have uh, an additional connection all the way up through East Somerville, close to Sullivan Square, but actually connecting to the orange line at Assembly Road. Route 64, we changed uh, two things. We had initially shown a uh, connection to the proposed West Station uh, on the Route 64, but because the um, period of uh, construction uh, for that station is past our five-year implementation period, we've shown the routing uh, as it is today instead. Uh, we've also reverted back to our current routing in the um, North Beacon Street area, recognizing that there are um, populations that are dependent on our services in that area, as well as some uh, new, um, some new uh, development. Before I go any further, I'm seeing a couple messages to me in the chat. Please send those to Antoinette slash ask a question uh, because I'm looking at my presentation and I, I can't do both at once. Um, but if you send them to her, um, those will get to me uh, throughout the end of the meeting and we'll, we'll be able to answer those questions. Uh, it, it could be that I answer it in, in these, these slides though. Um, next is bus route 74. Um, we had initially just had service on Concord Ave proposed in May using the 75 and the 78. We heard from a lot of folks that um, we needed more frequency on Concord Ave due to new development and existing destinations in the area. Um, so we've brought the 74 back. We've actually proposed it with new Sunday service and it would be proposed to extend into Belmont Center as we had proposed for the Route 75 as well. Okay, the 76. Um, a few changes here. First of all, we've added back midday service. We had initially proposed this as a weekday peak only route. Um, we also uh, initially on our map, it wasn't entirely clear if we had been proposing serving Hanscom Air Civil Air Terminal in both directions. We only serve it in one direction round trip now. We would continue to do that pattern uh, in this uh, new updated version. 
Uh, we also uh, reverted um, some of the routing we had proposed changed in Lexington um, to continue to serve Lexington Center um, for better uh, connections to Lexpress and to the Route 62 and to destinations in Lexington Center um, and would continue back um, by where the high school is today. We also uh, heard from folks that was important that we served Acorn Park Drive with 72. I'm um, sorry, with the 60, with the 76 and the 62. So we are now serving Acorn Park Drive inbound with both of those routes as we do today in this updated proposal. The Route 80 is something we heard from a lot of people about. So this was one of the pieces we heard um, missing in the initial draft network that we shared with everyone. Um, the thought here was that a large portion of the Route 80 um, goes along uh, the Green Line extension route, um, but we also recognize that a connection between Arlington and that Green Line extension uh, was very important to folks. So we've brought back um, the northern part of the Route 80, uh, connecting between um, Arlington Center, um, down um, Boston Ave to Medford Tufts GLX station, and then also continuing to Davis Square for a red line connection. Uh, we've also combined this um, with what is typically the northern half of the 350 today. Um, so we have service to North Burlington, Third Ave, the Burlington Mall, um, through Woburn and Winchester as the 350 does today. Um, and then anyone who would be typically taking the 350 today to get that red line connection that currently exists at Alewife would instead be getting that red line connection at Davis Square on the 80, um, or a green line connection would now be available at Medford Tufts as well. Um, it, I'll mention, I'm, I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail about this, I'm happy to answer questions about it, but we, this is also uh, partly uh, due to bringing back the 354 express route from North Burlington, um, so we, we altered the routing in, in Burlington accordingly. Okay, the route 83, we heard from a lot of folks um, that our proposal to go to Kendall Square instead of Central Square um, on this route was not as desirable as its current destination. Um, so we've reverted the Route 83 service back to what it does today, connecting Ringe Ave, Porter Square, um, parts of Somerville Ave down to um, town to uh, Beacon Street, Hampshire Street, and Prospect Street to Central Square. Um, I will note there are a lot of new uh, connections to Kendall still, so this, this seemed like a reasonable um, change that we could make to, to accommodate those folks. Um, Route 87, so this was a big one. Uh, we heard from a lot of folks that they still wanted to keep a connection, um, a direct connection from Clarendon Hill to Davis to um, Porter Square, to the Market Basket in Union Square, and then to the Twin Cities Plaza in Lechmere. Um, we agree, I think we, we recognize that this is an important connection for folks. Um, so we've brought back the 87 as it is today. However, um, today the 87 only goes to Clarendon Hill, not all the way to Arlington Center um, on Sundays. We're proposing consistent seven day a week service all the way to Arlington Center. And so for that very long 87 route that we had proposed in May, um, instead of going all the way up to Turkey Hill, we are proposing to bring back a slightly altered Route 67 as it runs today um, with weekday service from Turkey Hill um, down Mass Ave um, actually using Mass Ave all the way from um, Arlington Center to um, Alewife Brook Parkway, connecting to Alewife that way, rather than using Pleasant Street and Route 2, which currently have um, other service um, proposed in this um, network. Um, and I'll note 
this is something we heard from a lot of uh, Route 67 riders about. Um, as Although we had proposed a red line connection at Davis, um, we heard that a lot of folks really wanted that direct alewife connection. Uh, okay, Route 89 and T101. Um, so something we heard from a lot of folks in the Winter Hill, Ball Square area um, in Somerville is that they needed a good connection to Davis Square. Um, so we have altered our proposal to bring an 89 connection um, that would connect from um, Sullivan Square, up Broadway, College Ave, and then to Davis Square. Um, because of that, we've also altered the routing of the T101 accordingly. So instead of making a kind of more right turn, um, it's using that portion of um, Main Street instead for better coverage and, and, and just because we would be having that service on Broadway. Okay, Route 90. Um, so this was a very long route that we had proposed. Uh, we heard from a lot of folks, again, a long route made folks worried that it was not going to be reliable. Um, we also heard from our operators that they were worried about um, restroom access. So we have shortened the Route 90. We've also increased frequency. We heard a lot from um, folks, especially on Highland Ave, that they expected more bus service along that corridor. And we absolutely agree with them. So we're proposing this route run every 20 minutes or better for most of the day up until about 10 p.m. Then it would hit about 30 minutes or better. So it would run from Clarendon Hill through Davis Square down Highland Ave, just as the 88 does today. Uh, but instead of going all the way to Lechmere, you get a Green Line connection at East Somerville Station on the new Green Line extension. And then it would travel through East Somerville, close to Sullivan Square, but with a direct connection to the orange line at Assembly Square. Um, and then uh, to accommodate the other proposed half of that uh, draft versions 90, um, we uh, propose a new route, the 113, that would travel from Assembly Square where that uh, Route 90 ends. Um, then would travel up Everett um, over to Chelsea and would actually extend from um, Chelsea Station, which we had initially kind of recommended it, it end at, all the way to Bellingham Square, which we heard was an important connection to folks. Um, I'll also mention we heard a lot of um, questions from folks worried that um, there are some special trips that we run on the Route 88 today to accommodate um, crowding, especially during bell times at um, places like Somerville High School. Um, our map doesn't necessarily show that we would still be running those trips today, but I can assure you that uh, it's our intention to provide that service where we would anticipate additional crowding um, and would run special trips like we do today on the 88 on the 90 instead. Okay, I think this is my second to last one. Um, Route 95 um, has a, a change where instead of going to Wellington um, in the, uh, coordination with changing the um, Route 87 back to its existing routing, um, we have it going down Mystic Ave instead and connecting to the orange line at Sullivan Square. And the Route 54 was a new route that we had proposed um, connecting Arlington all the way down to Riverside Station. Um, so there are three changes here. The first is that we have switched the routing between Waverly Square and Belmont Center to Pleasant Street rather than Waverly Square. We heard that this street was very narrow and might not be very accommodating to a bus. Um, so for safety reasons, we put it on Pleasant Street um, with connections available at either end, as well as a pedestrian bridge, um, kind of in the middle of those two destinations. Um, we've also shortened the route to terminate in Waltham Center, um, where there's still plenty of connections available to access a lot of different locations in the area, um, but recognizing that it was a, a very long route and we wanted to make sure it was reliable. Um, we also, um, decrease the frequency of this new proposed route 
from every 30 minutes or better to every 50, excuse me, 60 minutes or better, recognizing that we had a lot of changes that we were working to accommodate um, based on the feedback we uh, received from everyone. And we uh, had to find places where we could balance out um, that, that's those service needs and, and ensure we have enough service to, to go around. I know that was a lot. <laughs> Thank you all for, for bearing with me. Um, now is the time, if you haven't already, if you have any questions, um, please send them to Antoinette slash ask a question. Um, if, if you are on the phone, you can press star nine to raise your hand and we will unmute you. All right, so Olivia, we've been getting a lot of questions in the chat here and I'll do my best to aggregate them up um, for you to answer. Um, the first question is actually sort of a global comment, a question about what the what the user calls um, curly cues, but in service planning would call a deviation. This is a, uh, an instance where a bus would take a turn and make a slightly circuitous loop off an otherwise straight route. And the question is, why would we do that in some places and, and not others? And she, I think the person is noticing that sometimes we add them back in, sometimes we take them away. Why do we do it and how do we make that decision? Excellent question. Um, there are many reasons. Um, I will say uh, there are, most of the reasons I can think of right off the bat are due to terrain or grade. Um, some examples of that would be the change we made in Medford Hillside. Can you all still see my screen? Okay. Um, so we, we made a change in Med Medford Hillside, um, recognizing that the grade there was really steep. Um, another example of that is that we um, changed the routing slightly for the Route 90 um, to have a better connection at the East Somerville Green Line Station, recognizing that the grade between um, the um, Gilman Square Station and um, Highland Ave was incredibly steep as well, even though it was nearby. Um, so a lot of this is you know, not entirely evident when you look at a flat map, but when you go to these places and see how steep they are, sometimes we need to be able to accommodate folks um, with, with that. Um, I hope that answered the question, but feel free to add more if, if you need more detail. Sure. Um, by sending a chat to Antoinette. It's always a trade-off between staying straight for the folks who don't want to stop there and taking a small detour and, and dropping folks off right at their doorstep for those who, who are there. Um, next question um, for you, Olivia, is um, on, we've had a few questions on the 67 um, and two questions very similar. Um, it, folks live on the 67 um, over on the Pleasant Street side. Um, what are their options now? Um, that the 67 were proposing to run down Massachusetts Avenue to Alewife, whereas before um, they had access to Alewife in a different way? Excellent question. So um, the portion of the 67 that would no longer um, be served by the 67 on Pleasant Street is between Mass Ave and Route 2. Um, so this portion is covered by the new Route 54, um, which from that route, you could connect to, um, I think I counted one time about six rapid transit, uh, six buses that would get you to rapid transit. So um, you could connect in Arlington Center to all of the routes there, including the 77 um, or the um, 80. Um, you could also connect to the 62 and the 76 on route two. Um, or you could travel down to um, Belmont and connect the 74, the 75. So it's really up to you and where your final destination is. Um, but you know, it, the expectation is there would be plenty of options available to you to make a transfer, um, recognizing that uh, we, we did have a lot of folks on this portion of Mass Ave between Arlington Center and um, at Wifebrook Parkway, who are also really looking for that continued um, red line to alewife connection. 
Thanks. We've also been getting a bunch of questions on Route 80. So I'll take them off here, Olivia. If you need me to repeat, let me know. First question is, are we proposing for the 80 to become more or less frequent than it is today? And will that change after the Green Line extension opens this fall? Second question is, would we entertain a deviation or a curly queue on the 80 to Medford High School um, right around um, times when, when, when school opens and closes? Um, we got a comment that it was a bad idea to break it up. And a question, um, will there be a connection sort of between the middle of Winter Hill and East Somerville? So again, question on frequency, a deviation to Medford High School, um, breaking it up and a East sort of Twin Plaza and East Somerville to the middle of Winter Hill. Okay. Number one, frequency. Um, we're expecting this route would run every 30 minutes or better um, during peaks. So think, you know, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. and about 3.30 or 4 p.m. to about 6 p.m. Um, and other times we would anticipate frequencies closer to every 60 minutes or better. Um, there's a, an outline here which kind of goes over exactly what kind of frequencies we might be anticipating if you all want to take a look at the remix map. Um, so I think this is pretty equivalent to what the 80 runs today. It might be different and sometimes rather than others. Um, I'll also mention though that just generally speaking, um, the MBTA service planners do review things like ridership and crowding on our routes quarterly and make adjustments to service accordingly. Um, so if we were to see things like super high ridership or crowding on a route like Route 80, um, we would be able to make some adjustments um, to make sure we're able to address that. Um, deviation. Um, that's a good question. Uh, it's not one I can answer for you today, um, but I will say things like that as we go into implementation and start ironing out exactly what our service will look like um, on the ground, putting in an actual schedule, um, those things will, will kind of be more apparent, but we'll be working with all of the municipalities in the area um, as we begin implementation to identify different situations we need to consider in terms of changes on the ground, but also some things to keep in mind, like high school students and, and what their schedules might be and things like that. Um, connection to East Somerville from Winter Hill. Um, I don't know exactly where this person lives, <laughs> but I can give you um, a general connection idea. So um, if you're close to the Green Line extension, you do have that as an option to get into the East Somerville area. Um, there would also be service on Route 89, um, which would serve down Broadway into East Somerville. Um, and you'd have the T101 um, using Main Street for a portion and then Broadway over through East Somerville as well. Did I answer all of that? Yes, I think that's that's it. Let's let's jump uh, to a non-root specific one, which is a very basic question. What does the capital T mean in front of a root? Amazing question. The T here, um, and I, I believe we might still be workshopping this because I think some folks might still be confused about it. Um, but the goal here is to, to basically um, make it clear that these routes are high frequency. These are the every 15 minute or better routes um, that you can expect You know, every 15 minutes or better from 5 a.m. to 1 a.m., seven days a week um, that a bus will show up at your stop. Um, the, the thought here is like, you know, people take the T uh, and they're often talking about say the green line or the red line um, because those are frequent services. Uh, and we kind of wanted to bring that thought of the T to bus, um, but we're open to suggestions if, if that's uh, confusing, uh, absolutely understood. Great, we got some questions here about the 83. Um, what is the future planned frequency of the 83 specifically on Sundays? Um, what was our rationale for changing the 83 and terminating it from, uh, from Kendall to Central? Um, and on the other end of the 83, why doesn't it go to Alewife? 
So that's three questions. Plan future frequency, especially Sunday. Rationale for Kindle versus Central. And why doesn't it go to ALS? Great questions. First of all, you can see on the screen here, but I'll read it out too. We're anticipating frequencies of about every 20 to 30 minutes for most of the day on the 83 on Sundays. Um, just as a rule of thumb for our whole network, we're increasing Sunday service by 100%, which means twice as much service um, throughout the network on Sundays, um, which is really exciting. Recognizing that people don't just use the bus to travel to their nine to five jobs, but they use it for everything. And sometimes people don't have nine to five jobs. Um, so I hope that helps for Sunday service. Um, the reasoning for putting it back to Central Square is we heard from a lot of folks um, that especially along Ringe Avenue, uh, that they use the 83 to access um, things like social services or shopping um, in Central Square and that that population valued a connection directly to Central Square more than they did to Kendall Square. Um, we do have a lot of new connections to Kendall Square as well. Um, so it seemed like something that was a, a reasonable um, adjustment back to what we actually do today. Um, the reason that the 83 does not go all the way to Alewife, and I know as a, a, an 83 rider occasionally, it's frustrating, uh, is because we cannot actually make that turn from Alewife on, on Alewife Brook Parkway um, onto Ringe Ave, that left turn. Uh, that is an illegal left turn, um, so we can't go over to Alewife uh, with the current configuration. I think that's all for the 83. Uh, <laughs> let me know if I missed anything. Great. Um, we've got, jumping back a little bit to the 67, but also sort of um, combining it with the 62 and the 76, we have a question about uh, an observation that the network redesign generally decreases service along Route 2 um, into Alewife, um, and a little bit of concern about that. And how the, the question is, how do we know that the 62 plus the 76 will be adequate for the ridership along this stretch? First, I'll kind of give give my spiel uh, again about the fact that we do monitor ridership really closely and make adjustments to our service based on the ridership we see on different parts of our system. So at any point, if we were to see crowding uh, in this area, we would address it as best as we can. Um, that being said, um, the Route 62 in the bus network redesign proposed network Number one uh, has service now on seven days a week, which it doesn't have today. Um, so you'd be uh, actually getting a lot more service on um, the weekends on Route 2. Um, so I, I think that's a, a really exciting thing. Um, but the Route 62 would be running every 30 minutes or better during kind of peak rush hour weekday periods. Um, on top of that, the um, 78 would be running on a portion of Route 2, again, every 30 minutes or better during um, peak periods. And then the, um, set, the 76 would be running every 30 minutes or better as well. So if you combine all of those, you would anticipate in every 30 minutes, you would probably have approximately three buses um, passing through your area. Um, I, hope, I hope that makes sense. Great, we've got uh, two, two questions here on the 87. Um, first, um, just basic basic question, what is the proposed frequency on the 87? Um, and second, and Olivia, it's okay if you don't know this, it's a very specific question about a single bus stop, which is the 87 bus stop in Arlington Center. Where is it and what's its condition? <laughs> Okay, great, I can answer that. <laughs> so the 87's frequency on um, weekdays during peak, we'd anticipate every 30 minutes or better, off peak every 60 minutes or better. Uh, keeping in mind that like we have with the 88 today, we'd have that combined service between Clarendon Hill and Davis Square. So you'd be having more frequency there. And then from Davis Square over to Union Square, you'd also have the T96, which would be a high frequency route. So the actual 87 um, running from Arlington Center would be every 30 minutes or better during peak, every 60 minutes or better off peak. Um, for specifically Arlington Center stop, um, this is a situation where the uh, current layover location is at 
um, Franklin Street, Broadway at Franklin Street. Uh, this is because um, there is not enough room for the 87 to terminate um, kind of right before it turns, turns onto Mass Ave. Um, it's an unsafe layover location. Um, so for now, that is where we um, are ending the, the, the outbound trips is on Franklin Street before continuing um, inbound trips with the first stop right by Mass Ave um, before it takes a turn and loops back. Um, I think we're aware that, especially for folks um, where um, making a, a bit of a trip for a transfer, um, this can be especially frustrating. Um, we would love to consider something where we could have a better transfer situation to especially the Route 77. Um, so this is something that we're aware of. Um, this is one of many potential uh, things that we could um, try to coordinate with implementation of bus network redesign, um, recognizing that there's definitely going to be some um, changes on the ground in order to accommodate this new network. Um, so that's what's going on with the Route 87 layover in Arlington Center. The question here um, about what will the, what is the planned frequency of the 89? Last I saw it was every 30 minutes, which doesn't seem to meet our design goals. So yes, every 30 minutes during peak for the Route 89. Again, um, we would be monitoring ridership to ensure that we have um, enough service for the folks that um, would be using it. Um, we would still be having, you know, other connections, especially to the red line using the T101. Um, so there is a lot of service kind of connecting to um, those different high frequency rail connections um, within the Winter Hill area, if, if that's of concern as well. Um, but yes, it's every 30 minutes during peak, and I believe it's every, yep, almost all day. Um, so from 6 a.m. to about 10 p.m., you would be expecting a bus every 30 minutes or better. Great. Um, next, we can turn, I'm getting, getting a few questions here about um, Davis Square generally, not a specific bus route in Davis Square, but generally um, this, um, this rider is observing we are increasing frequency to, to Davis Square. Um, can you confirm or deny that and talk a little bit about what it will mean for all these buses coming in and around and through Davis Square? Um, I, I do not want to be quoted on saying whether or not there is a total sum increase specifically in Davis Square that is disproportionate to elsewhere in this region. Um, but there are some new routes serving Davis Square. Um, we are, you know, upgrad upgrading the service to things like the T96, um, which I can pull up just for everyone's reference. Um, but some of these routes um, are, are also, you know, staying pretty similar to how they are today, like the 87. Um, the 90 uh, is, is actually essentially equivalent to what we would be running today with the 88 and the 90. Um, so uh, generally speaking, um, you know, of, of course, we're, we're increasing service across the board by 25%. So it is uh, a chance that there's additional service specifically in Davis Square. Um, where we do have a lot of additional service, um, we look to be, you know, coordinating with our municipalities to identify um, if there are good candidates for um, things like bus lanes or transit priority in order to better um, run the service that we have proposed. There's another part of that question that I that I left out. I apologize. Were there any plans to sort of redo um, the surface level of Davis Square Station? Um, to answer that, I think we, we would definitely um, sort of defer to the roadway owner and our partners in Somerville uh, there as well. Yes. That being said, um, there are some um, efforts ongoing to improve the um, elevator access to Davis Square. Um, I'm not sure if, if that was part of this, um, but I, I do know there um, may be some kind of ground level 
location um, changes related to that. That's an ongoing project. I think you can hear more about it if you um, go to the MBTA website. Um, I think there's a project page up for that project specifically. Um, uh, Olivia, I'm gonna give you a break for a second because I've got one about communication and outreach here. Um, the question uh, from the chat uh, is just, how are you going to tell everyone about this? How are you going to communicate about that? Um, and I can, I can take this one. Um, the answer is, this is one reason why we are slowing this process down to a five-year implementation plan. Uh, not only are some of these changes dependent on capital infrastructure changes on the street, which can take years to implement, um, this is a lot of change, and change can be difficult. Um, and we, as MBTA staff, owe it to our riders to slow down and communicate very comprehensively and carefully about these changes. Uh, so I actually, on my team, I have um, uh, some work underway now uh, to reach out to riders and asking specifically about how you get information about your bus and how that will change in the future and how you would like us to, how we're doing a good job now and how we're doing a bad job now and what you'd like to change about it. Um, once we make it through this board process, we will be increasing um, that outreach and planning uh, as well. Um, so I hope that that helps. We, we know we have a diverse rider base. Some folks get information very quickly on their phones. Others do not. Um, some folks get information well in advance. Some folks get information about their bus route as they're walking to their bus stop or as they're waiting to their bus stop. And we need to meet every rider where they are. Um, so that's, hey, that's Justin. yes. Sorry. Before we go to a next question, um, and, and thank you for your answer on that one. I think that's a really important question because you know the communication isn't stopping here tonight, right? Um, I wanted to make sure that anyone on the phone who is not able to drop a question in the chat, um, if they do have a question, um, you can press star nine on your phone to raise your hand and we can call on you just to, to, before we get to the end of things. Great. Uh, I've gotten a general question, uh, quiz for you, Olivia. Um, can you please offer a brief but specific explanation about these network design principles or service design principles? What are they um, and what are the major elements? Sure. Um, so I will say there's a lot more information about this on our bus network redesign webpage. Um, so I will. Uh, recommend if, if anyone wants to dig into this more, you're welcome to. Um, some of the main principles we're working with here are creating a legible network where um, not all of the routes do different things on different times of day or different days of the week, making sure that folks know if they show up to a bus stop, they're gonna know where the bus is gonna take them. Um, another one is, is, you know, equity, making sure we're, we're serving the riders that rely on our service the most um, and meeting them where they are and bringing them to the places where they actually need to travel. Um, additionally, a, a huge um, push for this is creating new community connections. Um, so a lot of um, the uh, connections in our um, system today are kind of focused at funneling folks downtown or to you know, previously established um, centers of commerce. Um, there are routes in our new proposal, things like the new Route 54, um, where we're connect, making new connections kind of across town instead of funneling folks in to then have to transfer and, and travel out again. Um, Justin, am I missing any of the big ones? <laughs> no, that's right, uh, direct and um, circuity, um, and we say legibility, but that's a fancy way of saying the bus is goes to the same place every day of the week at all hours. There's never any deviations. You have to worry about does the bus run on Saturday or does it take the left on you know every third Tuesday? It's, it's, it's a simple network. Uh, we've got a couple of questions I'll knock out here, which is how do we track ridership? You know, Olivia's saying we'll be monitoring ridership to make sure there's enough buses out there. How do we track ridership? The answer is uh, yes, one is through the Charlie card system and the fare box when you pay. 
um, and you tap your card at the front of a bus. Um, the second is an automatic passenger counter system, which is usually infrared beams or cameras uh, on the doors of the buses that um, track um, movement in and out of, of the doors of the bus. So we have two systems for monitoring ridership. Um, the second question was about, do all these changes constitute a requirement for more or less drivers? Yes, <laughs> on net, they all require and add up to a plus 25% increase in bus service, which requires a plus 25% increase in MBTA bus operators. That's about 440 new bus operators. Um, that is a challenge for us because we are currently in a deficit of roughly 300 operators. Mm. Um, so yes, a lot of these changes, while some of them um, are, are reductions and some of them are additions, on net, this is a 25% bigger and more frequent network than the one we have today. Um, getting back into the service um, details, Olivia, there's a question, is there a bus between Inman Square and Kendall Square? Great question. Um, the answer is there, hold on one second. So, um, there is not a direct bus, if you're talking about standing like at the intersection of, um, Hampshire and Cambridge Tree, where they're doing all of that work right now. Um, there's not a direct bus right there, um, but there is one um, off of Webster Street, um, where Webster Street meets Cambridge Street. That would be the Route 85. Um, so that's a, a few blocks away from the actual center of Inman Square, um, but that does make a connection to Kendall. Um, there's also a connection um, with uh, the 68 and the 64 um, from Broadway, a few blocks south of Inman Square. Um, and there's also um, the Route 69, which gets you over to Lechmere, where you could transfer to the T101 to make it over to Kendall. So there's a lot of different ways to get um, from Inman Square um, to East Cambridge. It kind of depends, like, what exact block you're in that would uh, kind of sit, tell you what the best option might be. Um, I hope that helps. The question about the 85 again, just really quick, just clarify for us, Olivia. I thought I had seen the 85 was back, but I don't see it. Can you confirm? Okay, so the 85 is back. Uh, to be clear, the 85 that we're proposing is pretty significantly different from the 85 that runs today. Um, so one of the ways that it's different is that this um, bus would be running for the entire midday, uh, which the existing 85 only runs during peaks. Um, it, the 85 that we're proposing is essentially a combination of the CT2 and the 85. Um, though it, the 85 would not be actually serving um, that small portion of Spring Hill um, that is kind of between School Street and Central Street on Summer Street and Avon Street. Um, so uh, instead, it's, it's making this connection over to East Somerville and over to Assembly Row. Um, and then to the south, it's traveling all the way down to Ruggles um, with connections in the Longwood Medical Area and um, the so um, it's a route that's still, you know, true to the 85 connects Union Square and Kendall, um, but it does a whole lot more now. Okay, thanks. We've got. Um, let me just come back to the monitoring ridership question. Um, I'm real. I'm reading it a little bit more carefully, and the question is not only about how do we measure it, but how do we um, change policy in response to it. Um, and how do we actually consider that in our decision making? Um, we do aggregate those statistics from those two systems that I talked about um, on a weekly basis and also on a monthly and a quarterly basis. And the service planning team um, reviews ridership on all routes every quarter um, in preparation for our rating change, which is a fancy way of saying a quarterly change to bus service. So if we see that there is crowding, or high or low ridership, we try to adjust the schedule to match ridership in that way. Um, so to the question of what about 
a planned development, for example, like an assembly row um, and ridership really starts taking off, would we adjust? Yes, of course. Um, and we do try to um, maintain regular communication with our partners, uh, municipal partners uh, to understand where those developments are happening and how it will impact um, MBTA bus service. Um, question here, when is this being presented to the MBTA board? The answer is Thursday, um, the 17th. Next question is on the 92 for you, Olivia. Um, first is a, just a basic question, a factual question. Um, will it turn and, and use the Gilmore Bridge to get to Kendall Square? Yes. Uh, that is the answer to that one. <laughs> uh, it's not the 92 though, it's the T101. Um, so instead of terminating at Sullivan Square, you have a connection all the way to um, Medford. Um, and then it travels um, along uh, what is typically served by uh, a portion of the 92 today, turns onto the Gilmore Bridge, um, hits Leachmere for a green line connection, and then um, hits uh, Kendall for a red line connection. Right. We have a general question about um, bus connections to the new green line stations opening this fall. Um, and the rider observes uh, that many buses come close to the Green Line stations, but are not quite directly on top of the Green Line stations. And there may be some routing and topography issues there, but access can be difficult um, just given the hills surrounding the corridor. Can you talk a bit about what connections uh, and interactions we expect between bus lines and the new Green Line extension? Yeah, sure. So um, I'll specifically Specifically mentioned, you know, we heard a lot of that from folks and we're in agreement that that's a, an important consideration. You know, we talked about how sometimes you have to zig and zag a little bit to accommodate topography. Um, so we did adjust um, a, a couple of routes, um, specifically near East Somerville Station, which is right where my mouse is right there, um, to uh, jog a little bit um, on Tuff Street. Um, assuming we could get a stop um, kind of right uh, at the corner of Tuff Street and Washington Street to provide a, a more direct connection to East Somerville Station um, for the 85 and the 90 um, instead of uh, making it a, a bit of a trek. Um, we're also, you know, making sure that we're um, connecting um, with multiple routes, the uh, T96 and the 80 at um, the Tuff station um, and we're getting pretty close um, with the 89, um, though it, it is a, a slight bit of a walk. Um, you know, we're, we're doing the best we can. Uh, very clearly this region does not have a grid street system or uh, the green line did not build us any off street busways. Um, so we're doing the best we can within the, the limits of our existing roadways, more or less. Uh, but, but just know we, we are trying to, to make those accommodations as best we can. Um, and another thing I'll mention actually, um, an example of this is um, the T96 and the T47, um, we're proposing they terminate on McGrath Highway, which is pretty close to the East Somerville station and passes by the Union Square station instead of terminating in a different place in Union Square. So getting as close as we can um, to both of those stations on both of those high frequency routes. Great, next I wanna um, move on to sort of fresh pond uh, generally. Um, th there's some questions in here about the 83 and whether that should be serving Fresh Pond, but just generally we have some commenters noting that there's a fair amount of development and need for folks to get to and from Fresh Pond. Um, and how does the network redesign sort of accommodate that and what are the constraints we face uh, in, that, in that area? Yeah, great question. So I, I already touched on the Route 83 turning challenge um, on Aylway Brook Parkway. Um, so that, that's uh, something that a lot of folks bring up in this area. Um, we did bring back the Route 74 um, based on feedback we got from um, our, our riders. 
Um, so that does provide um, additional service right in this area. Um, you know, again, and I think this kind of applies to the network as a whole, um, this five-year implementation period should not be the last time we touch our bus system in the next 20, 30 years, right? Um, we need to make some changes as, as our region develops and this should be an ongoing process. Um, just like with the Route 64, how we're, we're showing it, um, not serving West Station right now because it's not happening within our implementation period, um, it is likely that if West Station were to be finished, we might adjust Route 64 routing to serve it. Um, so, you know, the, there are changes coming uh, and, and, you know, our region is, is definitely dynamic and, and our bus system should reflect that. Okay, I've got a question here about does the delay in the construction to um, uh, any of the bus garages impact this plan? And the answer is largely no. Um, we can implement this plan with the bus fleet we have with a, some minor exceptions. There is a small increase in, in peak vehicle count, but we can do this within the fleet we have. Most of the increase in service here is at off peak times in the midday, evenings and weekends. Um, last question, um, not, not, maybe not last question, the 350, what happened to it? And what does this plan um, uh, say for um, folks who, who who um, uh, use that route? Great question. So if you take the 350 right now and you live north of Arlington Center, you would take the Route 80, uh, which does exactly what the 350 does today, north of Arlington Center, um, but then travels through Medford Hillside and has connections to rapid transit at um, the Tufts, uh, Medford Tufts Green Line Station and at Davis Square. If you live on the portion of the Route 85 um, that travels on Mass Ave before it gets to Alewife, you could use the um, Route 67 to connect over to Alewife. The Route 67, again, um, we're proposing that the routing change and continue on Mass Ave between um, Alewife Brook Parkway and Arlington Center. All right, I am scanning the chat logs and I think we've got everybody. Um, thanks to those who are writing and saying thanks for the good presentation and um, thank you as well uh, to Olivia for this uh, tour de force. Question about smaller buses. Um, for the most part, no, we are trying to do this with the, with the fleet we have, um, but never say never. <laughs> and... It would be helpful if riders could sign up for updates about the particular busters that affect us. Absolutely, part of the communication plan, uh, which is forming now, again, to meet every rider where they want, want to be. And if you want us to be telling you about your bus route, that's great. If you want to hear about it more, more passively, that's fine too. Great. Thank you everyone for, for joining.